Hello everyone and welcome back to another video brought to you by SeniorCadWellness.com. If you enjoy today's presentation and find it informative, please feel free to subscribe to this channel, like the video, and share the content. Today's video subject, Can Cats and Ferrets Be Friends? Before we begin, let's first take a look at today's topic overview. Cats and ferrets get along. In most cases, they ignore each other, with the cat maintaining its distance and the ferret knowing better than to annoy the cat. However, some ferrets will torment the cat, and some cats will play too roughly with the ferret. To limit conflicts, introduce the two pets slowly and break up any fights. Ferrets are very curious, playful, and by and large friendly animals. They're a good personality match for most cats. Cats and ferrets have a lot of things to bond over. This can place a ferret on a cat's good side in terms of a peaceful coexistence. However, both cats and ferrets are predators, and fights can prove to be rather intense to say the very least. If your ferret becomes too energetic and playful against your cat's wishes, let's say, things could turn rather ugly. And generally speaking, cats and ferrets can live in peace on the best of days, primarily ignoring each other. Unless they were raised and brought up together, they'll likely choose to do their own things while under your roof. So much of the relationship, for better or worse, typically depends on the following. How they were introduced, their individual temperaments, how much space each animal has, their respective ages, and how closely they're monitored. Most cat and ferret owners know that cats typically ignore ferrets, while ferrets have what can only be described as a respectful interest and curiosity. However, as we noted a bit earlier, ferrets can be rather rambunctious, and if your cat is just not in the mood for all of that adventure, things could take a turn. It's not uncommon for cats and ferrets to get their wires crossed as it relates to body language. The inability to understand certain cues can create even more friction. A ferret going a bit too far with the play, receiving a warning from the cat, yet continuing on simply because it missed a vital cue. Ferrets do have some chompers, very sharp teeth and claws that can be used during an altercation and while they do have a rather slender body, they can hold court with most cats, at least to a point. By and large, a ferret's defenses are rather inferior. While they have the bite strength, they lack the size and overall weight of most cats, and once pinned down, they're in some trouble. And while ferrets have a good sense of hearing, it should also be noted that ferrets have rather poor eyesight. This makes it that much easier for a cat to perform a sneak attack. The take-home message here is, Always take precautions to avoid serious altercation. It all truly begins with the introduction process, which we will address right here momentarily. So, what are the ties that bind? What do cats and ferrets generally have in common? Well, let's start with temperament. When a ferret isn't bouncing off the wall, the temperament is not really unlike that of a feline. Next, we have diet. Ferrets can eat. Food that is designed for kittens and adult cats, uh, that does not include fish. Food that does not include fish. Next, we have those pet needs, those basic pet needs. Both cats and ferrets need a good play area, toys, treats, and litter box, very similar. And finally, they both love to play. Of course, this goes much better when the cat and the ferret are on the same page. Like so many pairings, the introduction can dramatically impact how well the two animals get along. Building a positive foundation is the key. Here's our advice on the topic. First up, prepare the ferret's cage. Never let a ferret just roam free when you are not present. A fight could break out before you even have the chance to blink. It's vital to set up the cage before introducing the ferret to the cat. The cage setting also provides comfort for the ferret if they are scared or stressed out by the cat. Place toys and blankets in the cage. Next up, allow your cat near the cage. With a ferret safe and secure, allow your cat near the cage just to check things out a bit. Allow the two to get a good look at each other while you play the role of 
what can only be described as referee. Be prepared to intervene, should your cat become aggressive. Allow your cat to sniff a bit of the ferret, but mostly the cage. As soon as your cat shows any sign of aggression, remove the cat from the room. Continue this act with breaks in between until a level of comfort has been established. Patience is the key. Next up, allow your cat to sniff the ferret. More than just the cage this time, the actual ferret. <laughs> Once some level of comfort, which is very important obviously, has been established, remove the ferret from the cage and allow your cat to have a smell. Keep the ferret firm and secure in your arms. And just like before, call it off as soon as either shows any sign of aggression. Try again once they are calm. And if you're familiar with our other videos relating to animal introduction, uh, so much of these steps that you're hearing here today are very much the same as <laughs> many of the ones you've likely heard in the past. It's all about gaining that trust and breaking things off when events take a negative turn. Our final tip, well, it's all about that freedom to play and roam and coexist. If you have checked all of the other boxes and things have maintained a positive vibe with no signs of distress, place your ferret on a leash and allow it to roam around your cat. Keep the party going as long as things haven't taken an aggressive turn. These practice type sessions are good for bonding. Eventually, your cat and the ferret will learn how to interact and coexist in a very positive way. After two or three weeks with no fighting or signs of aggression, you can remove the leash from the ferret. Always be on hand to intervene, but you don't have to be quite as vigilant compared to those early days. And before we close things out here today, it's important to note that results will vary. I can almost guarantee you they will vary. It's also important to understand that altercations, at least sometime down the line, are bound to occur to some degree. It's just the nature of a multi-animal household. However, aggressive acts are less likely to be deeply intense when there's a mutual respect at play. And that's really the objective here. It's not about building a friendship per se. It's about tolerance and respect, a certain level of recognition and trust that can allow disagreements to blow right over simply because, hey, I know you and we share the same house together. And while this video will only appeal to a very small amount of people, if you have a cat and a ferret, I'd truly love to know your story. How did the pairing come about and how are things going today? Please drop me a line in the comments section below. If you would like more information concerning today's subject matter, please click the initial link in the description box below and join us right over there. SeniorCatWellness.com is the place to be. And because this is obviously not a ferret focused channel, say that three times fast, <laughs> so much of what we offered up here today was scaled back to a rather large degree. But here again, if you'd like the full-scale version of this topic with all of the details, SeniorCatWellness.com is indeed the place to be. And once again, as always, feel free to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel if this type of content is of interest to you. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later.